Welcome to this tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. Today we're covering what you should learn to become a data analyst. Um, in my opinion, and a strategy or a framework or order or roadmap to do this um, in the most efficient way possible and the way that would make more sense to me if I was to relearn everything again and also some helpful resources um, that should put you on the right track and maybe the best methods for learning different tools. So here I've got a pretty basic outline that we're going to look into in more detail. Um, but you can assume that most people are pretty comfortable with Excel. SQL is then going to be paramount and that's going to lay the foundations for BI and data viz tools like Power BI or Tableau. Through there, we want to go into actually showcasing our skill set. And then you have optional tools, you know, like Python, R, Azure, whatever that may be, Spark. And hopefully... Uh, then you come to the phase where you're you're sort of working and implementing this knowledge professionally and continuing that learning. So as I said, we would hope that most people would have all right skills in Excel. You may need to refine these with things like functions, maybe formulas, lambdas, pivot tables, um, power query, whatever that may be. Um, but Chandu, Flex Your Data and Leela Garani are some people dishing out great content over on YouTube. So I'd recommend you check them out. Regardless of your relationship with Excel, stakeholders are going to be proficient in this. They may want to see data in this format and it's more universal. So we need to have a good grasp and understand that people may require data in an Excel format. So we should be OK with this. Now here's a big one, SQL, Structured Query Language. And what I would recommend here is that you become highly proficient. And that doesn't need to just be in querying data, this could actually be in programmability elements. And with SQL, performance is such a huge element that you will want to be as well versed as possible before using this professionally. So SQL is critical in understanding how to create and manipulate databases obviously a hugely important part of data analysis and this gives you an introduction to keys constraints relationships and so on when you actually use this in things like data modeling in power bi this is going to help you massively and through practice you learn to take conceptual business problems and solve these with a proper data tool or language like sql i would recommend you start with something if you're learning sql server like t sql fundamentals um, and then move into because you want to get the best knowledge and performance and get the fundamentals right, then move into things like HackerRank or LeetCode that will really serve you in getting questions that may be in sort of business user jargon and converting it within your technical skill set. Next up, we have a business intelligence tool, and this is going to be paramount in actually displaying data um, to end users preferably within the cloud and creating dashboards and reports. So why have I gone with Power BI? Well, Tableau's great and it's got a steeper learning curve in terms of visualization, but I prefer Power BI because of the integration with the Microsoft 365 ecosystem and also because it's got a hugely beneficial tool called Power Query um, for your, your ETL and this builds into your data modeling you then would data model within Power BI and you don't depend on add-ons like you may in Tableau. Um, and also a lot of business users are used to the Microsoft interface. So when you look at things like self-service business intelligence, this is going to be really helpful. Um, so suggested resources here. Well, obviously I recommend at the start you look at some sort of official documentation. The Microsoft Power BI is actually pretty good. Um, but one thing I found very helpful is to use LinkedIn. I use this daily, um, not for networking, really in the sense of acquiring jobs, although you can, obviously. Um, that's one of the main purposes. I feel like it's a very good knowledge sharing tool. And there's several, well, actually, I can't even count on sort of the top of my head how many good content creators there are for Power BI and data analysis. So if I was to give you three quick recommendations to sort of point you down the data visualization route, um, if you're on LinkedIn, that would be Gustav Judek, Jocelyn Rivera, and Kavita Behera. In their own rights, they both share a lot of helpful and intuitive and some even cutting edge visualizations and tips 
on Power BI and business intelligence. So I would recommend you to be on LinkedIn as much as possible and soak up that knowledge, especially for Power BI. Now, showcasing your skills is something that's really important. It's something I'm glad I invested in in my journey. Whereas I went maybe in a roundabout way, I started off with Python quite a while ago um, and then sort of had to reverse back. It was helpful, but it just wasn't the most efficient way to do things. Um, but something I'm glad I invested in was showcasing my skill set. And this can be in several places like GitHub, LinkedIn, on your own website. You can look at tools like YouTube. Um, it doesn't really matter. The point is that you can get your work out there and show people what you're capable in. Yes, uh, the world is in demand for data analysts, but it is very hotly contested and more so in certain geographic areas than others. So you want a mechanism to drag people in and bring people to you to discover your content um, and show that you're, you're an authority or I'm not going to say you're an expert, but maybe a subject matter expert in certain areas. And that instills confidence and it can actually make the whole um, you know, if you want to become a data analyst, pivot, um, it can make that job search a lot easier. So showcasing your skills and with the rate things change in the data industry, it's very important to show you're constantly refining your skill set and you're at the top of your game. Lastly, I guess a lot of people tend to focus on Python. Um, I think Python is fantastic. I use it a lot. Um, however, when you're thinking of the fundamentals, you really want to go sort of Excel. SQL is just paramount, um, and that will help you a lot with data modeling, which is another huge area. Um, and then you you can look at things once you're proficient in the rest, like Python. Um, so you want the... Um, you could argue and say, well, why didn't we mention R? Well, R is great, and it's sort of a more statistics-heavy language, but I just don't think it's... If you're going to invest time in a whole programming language, um, you should be sure that you, you may have other use cases for this in the future. So it's extremely, extremely popular and it's easy to learn Python, um, especially if you've dabbled in other programming languages. And the reason for that is because the syntax is quite like English if you're a native English speaker and it's, it's friendly. Um, and it's an OOP, so Object Oriented Programming Language. Um, it conforms to a lot of good principles. Now, it has powerful libraries to tackle data analysis and data science, such as pandas that you may have heard a lot about. But it's also commonly used to automate tasks. And I've got videos on this and it's just Python's great for those, you know, out of the box solutions can't handle automation or certain elements of use power automate a lot. You still need to cover those other use cases. And also AI and machine learning, well, we all know the buzz around that, but quite often in business intelligence and data, you will be required to occasionally come up with a solution and that may be AI and machine learning. So at least if you have the fundamentals of Python down, you can go in and start scripting and doing whatever you want. Now, that's an optional. There are lots of other optional things. There's Power Automate. You could be looking at Azure Data Factory, other Azure areas. You could be looking at other programming languages, I don't know, such as Java, whatever that may be. Um, I guess the important thing is not to spread yourself too thin because at the end of the day, you want to have a, a small skill set that you're very good at. It's going to be more valuable than just adding skills that you're kind of semi-proficient at. So I hope that made sense. Um, in my opinion, it's a very logical flow where you go from understanding um, concepts in Excel more into sort of the, the set theory and computer science area of SQL, really understanding, um, like I said, not just query and language, but how relational databases work. Then you can go into your BI tool. From there, showcase your skills. You've now got a really valuable skill set where you can start to pull people in um, to notice you. And then you can look at these optional areas that may add some power once you're, you're sort of an expert in the other areas. As usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.